deciding your destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. Well, welcome to Deciding Your Destiny. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm continuing on part two on this wonderful topic, which I began last time, and it's entitled Growing As You Go. The Lord wants us not only to go forward, but he wants us to grow as we go. When you're coming through a trial, remember, don't just go through it, but grow through it. The Lord intends us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that's 2 Peter 3.18, which I quoted in the last program, but it's well worth studying again and again. 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to grow not only in grace and awareness of divine favour, but we need to grow in knowing knowledge by studying and meditating on the Word, getting to know Jesus more and being changed into his likeness. The more we walk with him and the more we spend time with him, the more we will be changed. And that was the purpose, and this is the purpose of God, that we might be conformed to his image to his likeness, that we become more like Jesus and know how to cope with challenging circumstances, even in family, and challenging circumstances in relationships, maybe in the workplace, and to overcome and keep caring and reaching out to people, even who have hurt us, keep on reaching out and don't give up or give in because of an offence, because that's how the enemy would like to stop and put a roadblock in front of us. But we need to continue to go on through the obstacles and reach the objectives. And God's objectives is that we might be good ambassadors for Jesus and go forward from strength to strength. And then we also referred to a scripture which is powerful in 2 Peter 1.10, it exhorts us to make our calling and election sure. So good to know you can absolutely be certain that you have eternal life. Scripture says, he that has the Son of God has life, and he who does not have the Son of God does not have life. But the wrath of God abides upon him. So we need to know that we can know that we have salvation, have eternal life. I heard somebody talking the other day about having spoken to some religious people who were not Christians, not, not actually people of faith at all. And they said, oh, we believe that at the end of our lives, it'll be like two balances. We stand on one, like weighing our weight, and if our do good uh, balance is stronger than the do bad one, then we'll make heaven. And if not, we'll be lost. But that's not what the scripture teaches. The scripture says, by grace you're saved through faith, not of works lest anyone should boast. Jesus paid it all at the cross and he bore our griefs and carried our sorrows so we don't have to bear them anymore. All of our anxieties and fears, Jesus took them all at the cross. And that's what it tells us as we meditate in his word and we look to him as the author and finisher of our faith. And then it tells us, Romans 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not just about eating and drinking, but it's righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is about relationships. We cannot overemphasize the importance of relationships because life's greatest assets is relationships. Relationships with our Heavenly Father, relationships with each other, relationships with those in our community and keeping 
open hearts toward those who have made mistakes and have made bad choices. We don't write them off. We keep reaching out to them and we keep trying to bring them back into the kingdom. I heard just recently about a man who he was running a youth work and he had a real heart to win young people to the Lord and he did speak to this young person who wasn't a believer and he said would you like to come to know Jesus and surprisingly he said I don't want to know anything about Jesus I have no interest whatsoever so don't try to tell me about Jesus and in fact he was so upset he walked away and never came back but this leader had a heart to follow him and he found out where he worked during the day and so he found that he worked in this hotel where they do shoe shining and uh, he went about himself and went to find him and he found him there shining shoes and he went and had his shoes shined by him and while he was shining his shoes he was able to tell him how much God loved him how much God cared for him and as he really poured out his heart about the, the grace and mercy of God this young man began to come under conviction and began to weep and turn his whole time into a time of repentance and that teacher and leader was able to lead him to the Lord and he came to know Christ but it only because somebody pursued him he was determined to keep reaching out and sometimes we give up too easily we need to continue to pray for people who've gone away maybe they've backslidden made bad choices we need to keep pursuing them and praying for them and reaching out as the Holy Spirit leads and be led of the Holy Spirit in all these ways. And then we quoted a verse which is so powerful also. Psalms 119 verse 67. David said, Before I was afflicted I went astray, but now I keep your word. So what David was really saying I made a big mistake. I went astray. I was afflicted. It brought affliction upon me. He wasn't talking about disease or sickness, I don't believe. But I believe he was talking about the trouble that comes upon people who turn aside from following the Lord. And he came back and repented. He said, now I keep your word. I love that verse in Psalm 119, verse 105. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. That's why the enemy tries to make us so busy that we have no time to walk in the light of the word, no time to study the word and meditate because his word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. That means we'll know where we're going. We'll be able to make the right choices, make the right decisions because we're a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. And then it tells us also in Hebrews 4.2 that those people who were partakers of the word in Israel, the Bible says the word did not profit them or do them any good because they didn't act upon it. They just heard it and never acted on it. That's what the Bible says in the book of James. Don't just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Otherwise you deceive yourself. There are a lot of people deceived. They listen to a lot of words and even preaching. But they don't act upon it. So not hearing it, not doing it, doesn't bring any change. So when you let the word in and begin to live it out, that's when things begin to happen when it's accompanied by corresponding action, things happen and things change for better. There is a wee hope builder called Winning in a Losing World. This has gone out to many people in many countries, which I've written. 
winning strategies in a losing world. In the midst of all the bad things that's happening in the world, the good news is God has given us winning strategies in a losing world. The world's losing out. They may be making money in many things of that nature. But are we winning in the home? Are we winning in the family? God has given us winning strategies. This is a very short little hope builder that you can request. And we send it to you absolutely free. And then it tells us over in Micah 7 verse 8. Do not rejoice over me, O my enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be my light. The Lord is our light and our salvation, the psalmist David said. So if we fall, make mistakes or miss out, the good news is God's gracious and merciful. When we repent, we can return and come back and he will bring us light because he is light. God is light and in him there's no darkness at all. He brings us light when we walk in his ways. So let me remind you again a few points and then I will continue. Number one, we can grow through exercise. Growing spiritually through exercise ourselves spiritually. Exercising in the word, meditating in the word. Scripture says exercise yourselves unto God. And so we do that and we grow as we meditate in the word every day. Growing through knowing your calling. God has a calling for every one of us. We were brought into this world to be witnesses and ambassadors for Jesus. Yes, the enemy will try to divert us, take our attention, but we need to focus on the big picture and watch where we're going to know that we have a calling from Almighty God. Like when I was driving along the road some time back and we were turning right into another road and a lady came along at high speed and crashed straight into the back of us. She was on the phone and never saw us. She was distracted by trying to look at the phone whenever she was, should have been focusing on driving. So we need to focus, where are we going? God has a big picture, a big calling for us, and we are ambassadors for Christ. Number three, growing through walking in the light. We need to walk in the light that God has given us and realize that God guides us as we follow him day by day. And it is a daily walk. Every single day we can enjoy his presence, enjoy his peace, and walk in his ways. Have divine awareness. That's another little hope builder, which I hope you'll take a copy of. Divine awareness, living in the awareness of God's presence, living in the awareness of God's guidance and peace. When you have divine awareness, it gives you tremendous strength because you know you're not alone, that Almighty God is with you and for you and his wisdom to you. I love that scripture which I often quote, that he has made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. The Lord is our righteousness, and he guides us when we walk in divine awareness every single day. We all know of John Newton. He was a slave trader. We know the very famous hymn, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound, that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. John Newton wrote that song. He was a slave trader, but he had a divine encounter that set him free. God's mercy changed his life. And that's why he wrote the song, It's Amazing Grace, and it is amazing. 
how sweet the sound. Once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. So remember, if God's grace can reach a man like that, he can reach any of us and has a big future for us. And his grace and mercy is for all of us. Number four, growing through feeding on the word. That's a daily thing. I said in the previous program, how Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So we need to feed our faith and starve our doubts every single day. We have to feed our spirit just like we feed our natural bodies. And that's what Jesus meant when he spoke in Matthew 4. The enemy Satan was trying to deceive him and said, if you will worship me, command these stones to come bread. But Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Jesus spoke in Mark 16, 19 and 20. Just some of the last words he spoke before he went back to heaven. So then after that the Lord had spoken to them, that is to his disciples, he was received up into heaven and sat at the right hand of the, of the Lord. And they went forth and preached everywhere the Lord working with them and confirming the words with signs following. So we know that the word works because they spoke it out. They went out everywhere and they declared what Jesus told them because Jesus had just told them earlier in that chapter of Mark 16, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. He that does not believe shall be lost. And then he went on, these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall lay hands on the sick and shall recover, and so forth. That was in Mark 16, 19 through 20. But they responded immediately. That's the part I want to emphasize. They went out and preached everywhere, spoke everywhere. And the Lord confirmed the word with signs following. And I want you to know that the word works. It brings about results. This little hope builder exercising your influence is something we all can do every single day because we are called to be ambassadors according to 2 Corinthians 5, 20. We are ambassadors for Christ. But we need to exercise our influence in a gracious and gentle way. Speak the truth in love and look for opportunities as the Holy Spirit leads to shine the light and to share the word of the Lord. Bring hope to those that are struggling and know that God Almighty is with you and God is for you. Everywhere you go, God is for you and God is with you all the time. So I'm shortly going to be praying for you who need healing. For those who do not know Jesus as Savior, you can come to know him today. You can receive assurance of salvation today because God loves you and he doesn't want anybody to be lost. He wants everybody to receive salvation. The scripture says it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Not his will that any be lost. Who wouldn't want to escape hell and get to heaven? And the people have gone into a Christless eternity, hoping that they'll be all right. But you can know for sure that you have eternal life. Jesus said, these things are spoken unto you that you might know that you have eternal life, that you might know you have forgiveness. And he is keen and very, very much 
for your assurance of salvation every day of your life. And then it says, well, number five actually, growing through developing relationships. I emphasized the last time and I want to re-emphasize. Life's greatest assets is relationships. We had some family members home from America just recently. It was a wonderful time of fellowship where Valerie and Dave and, and other members of their families, several relatives came, about 25, 30 or more of our family met together and the tremendous joy and delight of being together, enjoying each other's fellowship and seeing people we hadn't seen, some maybe for 10 years or more, 15 years. Amazing fellowship and delight. And it brought such encouragement. And we are encouraged when we fellowship. And that's why the scripture tells us not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Make sure we are in fellowship regularly with other believers. And God will strengthen us and empower us more and more. Then I want to remind you again of a very important verse. In Isaiah 2, verse 1 through 3, it's talking about the last days when so much bad things are happening and turbulence is happening with wars and uncertainties and political upheaval. God's promise was this. This is so encouraging. Many people shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. I hope you'll take time and meditate on this, because that's a picture of what's going to happen in these last days. Isaiah 2, verse 1 through 3. God says, I'm going to move, I'm going to cause my church to become prominent. It's going to be like on the top of a mountain. Its light's going to shine. Its influence is going to be strong. And people are going to run to it. People are going to run to that brightness of the light of that church, which is the people of God. And then the wonderful verses, Psalm 107, verse 21 through 22. Oh, that men would give thanks unto the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works of the children of men. Let them sacrifice the sacrifice of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. We need to show a spirit of rejoicing and manifest a spirit of gladness because when we show gladness and joy and we rejoice in him and show an attitude of gratitude. It brings strength. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones, it says in Proverbs 17, 22. A merry heart does good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. So he tells us also in Psalm 100 verse one, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all ye lands. We are to show forth joyfulness and gladness, gratitude and thanksgiving for the unspeakable gift of eternal life and forgiveness of all our sins, for the assurance of eternal life and salvation. There's nothing can compare with the reality of God's great love and mercy just mentioned to you also a little hope builder it's called getting over what gets you down if you've already got one of these get another copy and share it with others because we all have situations that come that would get us down and rob us of our joy but this tells you how to get over the things that get you down 
So you can request this one also. And also I meant to mention this youth alert identity and destiny. In a world and a day whenever there's so much question over people's identity, even in the situation of the world today whenever there's so much talk about same-sex marriage, this here will encourage you. Youth alert. Be alert, be awake, know who you are. You are made in the image of God. You are a child of the King. Identity and destiny. Don't let the devil steal your identity. Jesus died for you and he wants you to have an identity that is powerful and strong. So I pray a blessing over you now in the name of Jesus. I speak healing over you in the name of Jesus. Let the healing virtue of Jesus flow right through your whole being. Receive your healing from anxiety and fear. Let the peace of God flow through you now. For the presence of the Holy Spirit is flowing from this place. In Jesus' name. If you haven't received Christ as your Savior, simply say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins. Come into my heart. I admit you, my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You died for me and rose again. And I receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Let us know where you're watching from. Let us have your prayer requests. We'll be happy to pray for them. God bless. You're watching Deciding Your Destiny with Dr. Cecil Stewart. encourage you to respond to this program by post, telephone, email or via our website to obtain free copies of our Hope Builders, CCN News, prayer requests or to help support this ministry by praying or giving. Look us up on Facebook and watch more programs on our YouTube channel.